when every time you think you have seen the worst, it keeps getting worse. Season 15, universally agreed as the worst season of Thomas the Tank Engine ever. Well, I think this is one of the worst. I'm not sure if this is the worst. I mean, I have yet to rewatch the Big World Big Adventures era yet, but at the very least, this season has the worst writing. And guess who is partially to blame for it? We meet again for the penultimate time. Now, I'm not saying Sharon Miller is an awful person, or that she can't do anything right. I mean, as we'll see in later seasons, she is a great voice director, but she is absolutely awful at writing. Writing the dialogue or the story itself, this is probably her writing career at its worst. There are so many contenders for the worst episode ever in this season. The worst in the entire show. Like Percy's new friends. Percy seriously thinks the best thing to do when he's got nothing to do is to play with the other engines. A much better priority than just helping your fellow engines or something. And finding animals as friends? Really? What exactly can you do to have fun with a bunch of shy, overly sensitive animals? Percy clearly should have known better than to be as loud as possible. And when has Percy ever been scared of Gordon thundering down the line? He sees that all the time. James to the rescue. Firstly, why did the Fat Controller do this rescue engine shtick this season before Flynn and Bell arrived? And why a different engine every single time? I mean, James and Toby in this episode, Edward in Edward the Hero, and Thomas in Stuck on You. Why not the same reliable and trustworthy engine who doesn't screw up every single job it's given? Or hell, since we constantly see Rosie shunting Rocky in shots of the search and rescue center, why not make her the rescue engine? Secondly, there's this infamous exchange. Toby, Sodor rescue engines are steam engines. You are a steam tram. Steam trams can't be rescue engines. First Thomas is prejudiced towards diesels, and now James is prejudiced against steam trams like Toby? What did they do to these characters? And thirdly, why didn't Toby just fetch Rocky regardless of what James had said? Toby should know that this big red dipshit isn't going to listen to him, and he probably knows he was going to make the situation worse, so why didn't he? Up, up, and away. Why? This one is nonsensical in every way, shape, or form. Why didn't Mr. Bubbles blow up the first balloon at the fucking showground when they were setting it up? Why does it take two engines to carry something so fucking light? Why does Percy think waiting for the first balloon and squeezing the second one through the tunnel were good ideas? Why did Mr. Bubble have three other balloons on standby? Did he think they were going to screw up this simple job more than once? And most importantly, how the fuck did he have that much breath to blow three whole giant balloons up in just a short amount of time? What, do air pumps not exist anymore? Spencer the Grand. This is a contender for the worst purely because of the visuals. Because, well, there are no visuals. It is literally nine minutes of a white screen, and we can't see a single thing except for Spencer's face. I can remember watching this episode years ago before I left for school. The lights were off, the curtains were drawn. Since this was before Daylight Savings when it premiered, it was a dark morning, and my eyes were struggling to wake me up. And after watching the first two minutes of Spencer the Grand, 
I felt like I was being blinded. This episode is a literal eyesore. How did the team at Nitrogen even manage to animate this episode? Kevin the Steamy. It's an episode all about Kevin bumping into everything purposefully as a brainless game instead of doing his work. Enough said. Wonky Whistle. This is possibly the worst written episode I have ever seen. I am already hearing too many rhymes and alliteration in the first 60 seconds. Thomas nearly caused a serious injury due to his impatience. The animals were being transported in the same single salt wagon instead of their own individual cattle wagons. And worst of all, Thomas is just completely deaf in this episode. He should have heard everyone's cries for him to stop, and he should have heard his own fucking whistle sounding awfully different. Emphasis on awful. It's an awful noise, and we have to listen to it non-stop for five minutes. Fiery Flynn. I know Flynn is new to working on Sodor, but he can't be new at fighting fires or listening for emergency calls. In fact, he isn't! I mean, my god, he is such a brain-dead idiot in this episode. Every fireman knows when there is smoke, there is fire. All Flynn needed to do was to look in the sky in front of him and head for the direction of any smoke he sees. Simple! And when he finds Edward and Gordon, he looks even more retarded at his job. He sprays them with water, despite the fact that there is no fire, and, more obviously, no smoke. Oh yeah, and possibly the worst and stupidest thing Sharon Miller has ever written, the very definition of a plot hole, I present to you people... The blue engine was Thomas. His firebox was on fire. 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 Please tell me I'm dead. This season tries to add in a lot of interesting things, but they are shattered by stupidity. The first three episodes are sort of like an arc, in that they are connected and they have a running element. But they are focusing on the logging locos, three annoying characters that haven't really shown much to earn their rewards. The Ferdinand episode does finally give him more than just two words to say, but even and then we still have to listen to That's right! That's right! That's right! That's right! That's right! right. Oh my god, the dreaded That's Right plague is spreading! Quick! Alert the paramedics! Happy Hero was an interesting idea for an episode. Hero visiting Misty Island because it reminds him so much of his home. Joby trees and everything. But Thomas is being completely oblivious to his good friend, which is out of character. And if Hero is homesick, why didn't he ever return back to Japan? His reason for coming back had finished long ago. Some old characters had keen roles in certain episodes, like Stanley, Bertie the Bus, and Butch. Fucking Butch, the breakdown lorry, who, prior to Stuck on You, had either appeared in the background, facing away from the camera, or when his front was shown, it was shown without a face. And now here he is, having a major role in a new episode, having a face, and having more than three lines of dialogue. 
This was absolutely mind-blowing in 2011. But the episodes they star in were terrible. Surprise, surprise, for being a worse version of season 12's party surprise. Stop that bus for how oblivious Thomas is. Oh, and if you look very closely, he left Bertie's driver behind and stuck on you because of the inconsistency of Butch controlling his magnet. There aren't actually any new characters introduced this season. The closest to new characters we get are the ones that were already introduced in Day of the Diesels. Dan, Dart, Belle, and Flynn. There's no reason to mention Norman and Paxton, because they are once again used as silent filler characters. Dan and Dart were portrayed as the comic relief duo in Day of the Diesels, kicking off their what he means is routine. Hello, I'm Dan. Uh, well, what I mean to say is... What Dan means to say is that he's the boss and I help him a lot. I'm Dart. Uh, I think. Uh, well, what I mean is... What he means is he doesn't know. Hose? What hose? Uh, don't know. What he means is, he doesn't know what you're talking about. But the routine is not displayed in Fiery Flynn or Tree Trouble. Both of them are portrayed more like Aryan Burt, mocking Flynn when he messes up and siding with Diesel about this tree competition against the Steamworks. Why didn't you just use Aryan Burt then? Oh wait, toys. Right. The writers were focusing more on Bell and Flynn, the fire engines. Their designs are either weird or might not fit in with the supposed time period of the show, but these two do have potential for being good characters, and they will be later on. It's just that their season 15 episodes portrayed them in the worst way possible. I have already mentioned my complaints on Fiery Flynn, you're not on fire? No! But Big Bell doesn't paint her in a good light either. Instead of her stern, determined, cautious character she'll display later on, she's loud, impatient, and wastes her valuable water spraying it on pigs. And yes, I did say valuable water, because that leads me to Bell's huge design flaw. So, Belle's gimmick is that she is a steam engine who can fight fires. She has twin water cannons on her tanks, and she can use the water from her tanks to put out the fires. She uses the same water from her tanks that she needs to make steam in order to move. This is such a flawed design choice that this mistake is literally shown in Belle's introductory scene in Day of the Diesels. Chuff to the washdown! But Belle couldn't puff. Belle couldn't huff. She had run out of water. It has problems, but they went with it anyway, because we need as many toys to sell as possible. Speaking of which, I think this season is the first one to start this frustrating trend with the show that continues on until... I think Big World Big Adventures or something. What they did was that they premiered all of season 15 before they released Day of the Diesels, which canonically takes place before season 15. So some of the kids watching might be confused about the existence of the Diesel Works, Flynn, Bell, Den and Dart. And it didn't stop there. They kept on doing this with every new season. Season 17 and King of the Railway. Season 18 and Tale of the Brave. You'd think someone might have noticed this. Another thing you will notice during this season is that most episode openings reuse a lot of animation. The best example is James to the Rescue's opening. James is a bright red engine. He is very proud of his polished paintwork, his tidy tender, and his bubbling boiler. The only song in this season is Hear the Engines Coming. The first few seconds made me think that this was an a cappella piece. Shake, shake, 
But it turns out that it was just the singers mimicking train sounds because that's the theme. Engine sounds. Like we haven't had enough of those songs already. But I quite like this one. The singers sound good and it has a catchy beat. Well... This season was a chore to sit through, not just because most of the episodes here are some of the worst ones ever written. A firebox is supposed to be on fire, you brainless cut! But it was also pretty boring. The same amount of alliteration, the same amount of rhyming, the same butchered characters, hearing the same lines over and over again, the same celebrations, the same problems with the same solutions, and giving us characters with plenty, if not loads of potential, but they either downgrade them or neglect to give them any focus. So, while the Railway series ended on a nice conclusion, the TV series had... Biff, bash, bosh! It whizzed into Emily's wheels! <sighs> but don't worry, we are now at the home stretch. There is just one more season, and this long period of boring will finally be over. How bad can it be? Hello, Flynn! What's the matter? <laughs> you look like a big red wobble on wheels! <laughs> oh, God!